the risk factors for brain abscess. Now, you need to understand that according to Nelson, Nelson says a very clear line which has been asked as a statement based question some years back, 20% cases, no risk factor is present. So, in children, 20% cases will have no risk factor. It is a old MCQ point, statement based question, right? In 80% cases, you will find a risk factor to be present. 80% cases, there are risk factors. Now, what are the risk factors? Let us try to enumerate these. First and the most important risk factor for brain abscess is septic contiguous focus. Septic contiguous focus. When I say septic contiguous focus, it means there is a direct extension from a localized uh, bacteria containing lesion to the brain tissue causing abscess, right? There can be a septic focus elsewhere in the body also, but that will first cause septicemia and then lead to brain abscess. It is usually rare or it occurs in the setting of multiple risk factors like infective endocarditis, tetralogy of fallow, immunosuppression, etc. If they ask you what is the most important pediatric risk factor for brain abscess, it is a septic contiguous focus. So, in bracket you can write it is the most important pediatric risk factor. Now, what are the common septic contiguous foci from where the infection can spread to the brain? It can spread through a localized pyogenic meningitis, also called as acute pyogenic meningitis. It can spread from otitis media and mastoiditis. It can spread to the temporal bone and from there it can go to the uh, temporal lobe. Then it can arise from cavernous sinus thrombosis. You know that cavernous sinus thrombosis can arise initially from uh, any bacterial infection in the danger area of the face, can spread to cavernous sinus thrombosis and from there it can lead to uh, infection in the brain. Then orbital cellulitis can be a common focus. Orbital cellulitis especially there in cases of frontal lobe abscesses. Then septic contiguous focus can sometimes be sinusitis. Last but not the least, even dental abscesses, particularly the upper jaw dental abscesses, can spread to the brain, producing brain abscess. The second group of focus, uh, second uh, risk factor for brain abscess is immunosuppression. So, any type of immunosuppression can predispose the patient to brain abscess. In case of immunosuppression, not only the typical bacteria, but atypical brain abscesses like fungal abscess can also be common. Thirdly, it can arise due to penetrating injuries. So, penetrating injuries is a common uh, mechanism of brain abscess in adults, but it is a relatively rare cause in children. Then fourthly, it can occur post-surgery. So, post-operatively, some patients can develop brain abscess. Fifth, it can occur due to right to left shunts. So, the common example of a right to left shunt causing brain abscess is tetralogy of fallow. It can also occur due to pulmonary arteriovenous malformations. Then it can arise due to foreign material transplanted or inserted in the CNS. The typical example for this will be a infected ventriculoperitoneal shunt. So, VP shunt can produce brain abscess in the patient. Last but not the least, brain abscesses can also arise due to infective endocarditis. Infective endocarditis alone is a risk factor for brain abscess. So, these are the important risk factors for brain abscess. However, remember these are responsible in 80% cases, 20% despite investigation you will not find any identifiable cause.